All right, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday night. It is about 11.05 p.m. here, California time, August 15th, 2024. We got Friday tomorrow coming up on us real quick here, so that's always a good thing. Latest activity here on the globe shows a 1.8 into Alaska. Let's go ahead and uh, see what's been going on here across the world. Looks like a pretty decent uptick in earthquake activity here following uh, the uh, earthquake there off the Taiwan region earlier today where they seen that 6.1. Uh, a lot of clustering picking up here across the Philippines area, Indonesia islands, and uh, more specifically here along the Java Trench where we're seeing quite a few threes and fours stirring up here following that activity there in Taiwan. So that's an, uh, definitely a noticeable increase here across this region. I'll uh, we'll keep an eye on that uh, throughout the day today or tonight. Uh, California-wise, we got uh, one earthquake here on the North American side of the plate boundary, a 1.7. Um, as far as anything major goes here, looks like um, 2.6 coming in there to the Ridgecrest area earlier this evening. Uh, also 2.5 in the Bakersfield region. Still seeing an overall heightened uh, earthquake sequence here across these areas. Pretty much draw a triangle. And uh, if you include all these uh, smaller quakes as well, you can include this all the way down to the Salted Sea area where we were watching uh, a little swarming activity take place here throughout the day today. And last earthquake looks like it was a 1.1 a couple hours or so ago in that area. But uh, I don't think we're done yet. We, we get these little periods of increasing earthquake activity here across California, Southern California in general calms down for a day or so and then it kicks right back up just a sequence of events going on at various locations out here not just not just on the uh this fault system up here or the ridgecrest area or this specific uh um puente hills fault uh it's just a broader view of regional stress out in southern california uh, las vegas area looks like most of this activity calmed down a little bit there's still another 1.5 couple hours or so ago seems like uh, all these areas are interacting at the same time um, when the pressure builds up out here. So that's obviously a sign to keep an eye on things in the region. That activity pretty much halts, though, um, and is limited to the Southern California area. So something's going on there that's preventing a lot of uh, any movement up north, aside from a, a handful of smaller quakes out here across the uh, uh, close to the creeping segment creeping section here of the San Andreas Fault and around the Calaveras Fault just a couple ones and twos out there from today uh, Pacific Northwest a handful of earthquakes including one earthquake here 29 miles deep into the Cascadia subduction zone 1.4 Cascadia sits off here obviously but it subducts and is uh, uh, underneath the North American plate right here so uh, it's uh let's check out the trimmer here tonight real quick let's see what we got still a pretty decent increase in trimmer tonight 403 epicenters uh, throughout the day today mainly up here across the washington area a little bit down there in southern oregon not a whole lot of uh, earthquake activity happening though up there for now um there's a little bit of movement happening over here further away from our area of interest uh, today we've seen a 3.3 in utah and a little bit of further movement out this way as well noticing a, a slight increase across the oil fields here of texas and oklahoma these guys have been getting hit lately uh, seems like the pressure is on out here around the north american plate far as uh, yellowstone goes i don't see anything showing up on the map but i do want to double check that and uh, seismograph stations there look pretty quiet. This is some type of wind noise or thunderstorms from earlier. Uh, environmental noise does show up here on these seismos. But earthquake activity, I'm not seeing anything up there. Uh, they did show one little quake here, a little 1.7 near Mammoth. That was at about uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Let's see if we can find that. Well, we would have to go back to uh, the previous day. So 1 o'clock in the afternoon is going to be uh, uh, this little quake right here, a 1.7. And that uh, did show up across Upper Hills. And uh, that's about it. Maybe over here at Homes Hill as well, a little spike of that reading. But uh, aside from that, folks, things are uh, pretty quiet there at Yellowstone National Park. 
eastern portion of the country. Pretty quiet. Down south here across South America, Middle America Trench region. Let's see on the globe what we have. Some older movement quakes here. Uh, deeper activity there, South America region. Right now it looks like the pressure gradients are great out here across the western Pacific and adjacent plates. This is the general stress uh, direction. If you look at the uh, general plate movement map here, uh, all these arrows of the North American plate here pointing towards the North uh, Pacific plate, excuse me, Pacific plate here moving off to the Northwest. And um, normally when one side is super busy out here, like we're seeing right now around the Java Trench, Taiwan area, Philippines, things tend to back off a little bit out here. But that doesn't mean that we're out of the woods in terms of earthquake potential. It just uh, it seems to happen that way. When we're elevated out here in California, things are a little bit quieter out here. So just vice versa. Right now, things are elevated, as you can see here on the earthquake globe in this area. Uh, Philippine uh, area, quite densely popul uh, populated with earthquakes there. Had that 6.1 in Taiwan. Just a cluster of new development going on here. Uh, in this general area looks like it's temporarily relieving a little bit of strain out here and it goes for not only california but the middle america trench as well a lot of older rings here indicating uh, or redder rings indicating some older earthquake activity uh, fairly decent cluster going on here across the kermadec trench and new zealand's getting in on a 3.7 earthquake right now uh, let me see what we i didn't mean not mean to do that click this up here uh, not a big earthquake, and it doesn't look like that earthquake showed up there on the um, seismograph stations there. This uh, South Karori, uh, I can't remember how to pronounce that. Going to have to help me out with that, Timothy. Uh, there in New Zealand is a ways away from that 3.7 that's coming in right now. So, But there is a little bit of activity. It looks like maybe another 3.7 in that general uh, location there. So for the time being... We got elevated activity out here, down south as well. The whole entire region quite active while this area takes a little relief there from all the earthquake activity. But don't, uh, like I say, don't assume everything is done for right now. Uh, let's see what we got. Iceland, what's going on up here in Iceland? Looks like some three stirring up. So let's go check out the Iceland earthquake map here real quick. Make sure everything's on. Bells are off. Live stream's up. I Like I say, I don't know what happened. Um, live stream went down here just a short time ago, but it's up now. Thanks, Timothy, for the heads up. I assume that it was still going. 3.5 over here around this uh, volcano area. The Katla volcano down here. Uh, fairly quiet, uh, aside from some smaller earthquake activity to the west. Uh, Grindavik down here in the Savart Singhi area in general, fairly quiet, not seeing a whole lot of earthquake activity. But with this renewed movement on a broader scale out here, it looks like in the last 12 hours, we'll keep an eye on that region because, you know, things are they're amplified there as far as the uh, next eruption goes. Uh, I don't think they put out an update, but let me double check, see what we have here. Uh, this update was put out, looks like two days ago on the 13th. So nothing new, just uh, stating that there's still 20 million cubic meters of magma down below that's been pressurized there for a little while. I'm sure it's above that right now. So things are just uh, at a uh, standstill in terms of the next eruption across Iceland. Uh, Kilauea Volcano, not a whole lot going on. We do have one earthquake up here, pretty shallow, right at the crater area here around Lava Lake. A little 1.8 just below the surface here still a little uncertain on to where we're going to see this eruption take place i guess there's always a potential of finding its way up here across the lava lake area or maybe around the crater rim area but uh, you know it's right now just a guessing game uh, let's check out the latest activity here real quick from the usgs with regards to Kilauea Volcano, I had to refresh it, make sure I got the most recent data here. And the volcano still at a yellow and advisory. Let me uh, zoom in just a little bit here so I can see some of these seismos. Uh, yeah, there's not a whole lot going on here. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity, but this can kick up in just a uh, blink of an eye. 
over the past 12 hours there, fairly quiet, aside from a couple smaller quakes there up around the summit area. Uh, deformation charts here shows us that uh, things have leveled off here, it looks like. A little bit of uptick here today, uh, over the past couple days here, I should say. Two-day chart, past week as well, and of course past month. We're uh, up there past the previous level seen there prior to that magma displacement from the summit off to the upper east rift zone. So, you know, another waiting game out here for this uh, activity. It's going to happen eventually. Just uh, got to have a little patience, I suppose. Uh, not a whole lot going on through Alaska. Very typical movement up there right now. Uh, the Philippines area, as I noted, is, uh, you know, they're having a lot of deeper activity across this region. A lot of uptick going on following this 6.1 there in Taiwan earlier this afternoon. No aftershock sequence following that 6.1. So, you know, there could still be something bigger brewing out there. But a more notable uptick here on a broader scale region in this area following that quake. All this newer activity here um, has stirred up following that uh, 6.1. So it looks like strain has increased across this general region. We'll keep an eye on that uh, area. Um, space weather real quick here. Looks like we're seeing a little bit of flaring activity from a far side sunspot or getting ready to be far side. Notice this uh, little feature here on the western limb. That is a little sea flare, C5.3 stirring things up. Nothing big, but you can see a little bit of the uh, the flare uh, results there on the global D layer absorption map, which affects radio uh, and navigation systems out there. If we get a strong enough flare, that is, but this little sea flare shouldn't do much. Um, no major roars in the forecast. Maybe a G1 class storm here come the 4th or, or uh, not the 4th or 5th, but KP index of 4 to 5 here in a couple days around the 18th. So we'll check back in on that a little bit later. Uh, it's a little early, though, to tell uh, if that's going to ring true or not. Overall threat, 20% chance for X flare. M flare at 65% chance. C flare at 99%. And, of course, we have this massive region here, 3784 in position. But uh, hard to say, though, if it's going to produce any more flares. It did produce that X flare a couple days back while it was center disk. And, um, well, it's just something we'll have to watch and see how it uh, behaves. Another little active region out here on the southeastern quadrant of the sun. Far as the far side of the sun goes, let's see what we got coming around the bend to us. Oh, got quite a bit here, it looks like. Uh, former sunspots here. Oh, this is kind of neat. Kevin put this into a nice little motion event here. So a lot of these sunspots here are former sunspots, and they look to have survived the far side of the sun. Coming back around the uh, bend here. This is 3762 that we're seeing on the southeastern limb. Uh, that is clustered, clustered with a couple other sunspots out here that were uh, formerly named here in the numbers. Uh, so we'll have a peek at what those are capable of doing in the days ahead once they crest around the eastern limb right here, uh, which it looks like they're getting ready to. So we'll continue to watch that uh, for these sunspots to come around. Uh, what else we got here, folks? I think that's about it. Just going to keep it nice and short. Uh, again, live stream is up and running. Seismograph stations are taking a little break as far as California earthquake activity goes. But uh, again, don't let your guard down. We do have, you know, a little bit popping up out here. But um, what do we got? 1.9 near Los Angeles. That's going to be on the uh, Puente Hills Thrust Fault here where that 4.4 struck. And, of course, this one over here a little bit... Uh, a couple minutes prior to that 1.9. So we're still on earthquake watch out here across this area of the state. And, um, you know, obviously some elevated activity happening over here, but doesn't mean that things are out of the, uh, the hazard zone, so to speak, just because we're seeing activity to the west. A little bit of relief, but we're not done. So we'll watch here for uh, some further movement potentially overnight. And um, we'll catch you guys back out here for the Friday morning update. Tomorrow's Friday. Woohoo! Made it to the weekend. 
Have a good one, folks. We'll catch you guys back out here in the morning. Take care and stay safe. Livestream is up and running.